Greetings space nerds and welcome to Microcosmos. I'm Colin Thomas Nichols and we're going to talk about CubeSats. CubeSats are tiny satellites used for tiny experiments or technology demonstrations. They were designed to be a standardized size that could be integrated easily into existing rocket launches. The goal was to allow graduate students the opportunity to build, design, test, and deploy satellites with a similar functionality to Sputnik. The CubeSat design was proposed in 1999 by professors Jordi Puxuari of California Polytech State University and Bob Twiggs of Stanford University. Twiggs was interested in finding out how much you could reduce the size and still have a practical satellite. Inspired by a 4-inch cubic plastic box used to display Beanie Babies in stores, Twiggs first settled on the larger 10cm cube as a guideline for the yet-to-be-named CubeSat concept. The term CubeSat was coined to denote nanosatellites that adhere to the standards described in the CubeSat design specification. Cal Poly published the standard in an effort led by aerospace engineering professor Jordi Puxuari. The size of these CubeSats have become scalable, allowing more complex experiments and goals. Common sizes are 1U, the original size and 3U, which is elongated on one axis by three units, making it 30 centimeters long. 6U CubeSats have been proposed, taking the shape of two 3U satellites side by side. The 2018 launch of Mars InSight will carry two 6U CubeSats to Mars, accomplishing the first interplanetary CubeSat mission. Structures for CubeSats are often made of space-grade aluminum and often feature solar panels that power the satellite. The electronics inside vary greatly as the use of commercially available off-the-shelf components is accepted. Notably, the ArduSat used the open-source platform Arduino to build a CubeSat that could be accessed and experiments could be written by students and uploaded for completion. Subsystems with CubeSats rely on miniaturized versions of satellite components, such as attitude control like reaction wheels and magnet workers, electrical power systems like lithium-ion on batteries and solar panels, command data handling such as microprocessors, flash memory, and RAM, data transmission, which commonly use UHF or X-band radio transmissions, and science experiments such as cameras and sensors to document an array of parameters. No form factors have been specified required by the CubeSat design specification for electronics inside or communication protocols. However, most commercial off-the-shelf and custom-designed electronics fit the form of a PC-104 board, which is not designed for CubeSats, but still presents a 90 by 96 millimeter profile that allows most of the spacecraft's volume to be occupied. Like larger satellites, CubeSats often feature multiple computers handling different tasks in parallel, including attitude control, power management, payload operation, and primary control tasks. Consumer smartphones have been used for computing in some CubeSats, such as NASA's PhoneSats. CubeSat propulsion has also made rapid advancements in technologies such as cold gas, chemical propulsion, electric propulsion, and solar sails. In 2010, NASA created the CubeSat Launch Initiative that aims to provide access to space for CubeSats developed by educational institutions and nonprofit organizations. Selected experiments fly as auxiliary payloads on NASA rocket launches or are deployed from the International Space Station. NASA has also created the Cube Quest Challenge in 2015, a competition to foster innovation in the use of CubeSats beyond low Earth orbit. Up to three teams competing may be selected to launch the CubeSat design aboard the SLS EM-1 mission in 2018. Unlike a full-size spacecraft, CubeSats have the ability to be delivered into space as cargo and then deployed by the International Space Station. This presents an alternative method of achieving orbit apart from the launch and deployment by a launch vehicle. The main advantage of CubeSats is the cost. Universities, private groups, and researchers can build a real-world working satellite for as low as 50,000 US dollars. And the cost will only go lower as the cost of development and engineering the components becomes easier and more affordable. Well, I hope you liked today's episode. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page to stay up to date. Have a good week, everyone.